Hi guys, welcome back to another video of Edward channel. So today we will be discussing about canine mammary neoplasm or canine mammary tumors which is also called as mammary neoplasia or CMT, canine mammary tumors. So this topic comes under either gynecological sessions or under surgery sections that is regional surgery 2 that is unit 5 of veterinary surgery and radiology. So if you haven't subscribed this channel yet, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. So what is the definition? Mammary neoplasia is the major surgical affection reported in small animal practice. The condition has high correlation with the effect of spaying or neutering age. Old unspayed female dogs, that is intact female dogs, are highly susceptible to this condition and can proceed to either a benign tumor or a malignant tumor of the mammary gland. Benign tumor will not be having a metastatic effect, whereas malignant tumor will be having the metastatic effect. Where malignant tumor is the more dangerous condition, whereas benign is much less danger condition. So if the, if the animal is neutered before 8 months of age, the incidence is less than 0.2%. So these are ill effects of continued exposure of the mammary glands to the estrogen. So these are the tumors of the epithelial cells of the mammary glands, which are either malignant, which is also known as carcinoma, or benign, which is adenoma, or complex adenoma and carcinoma complex, that is adenoma and carcinoma present at the same condition. So the most common neoplasm in intact female dogs, very rare in male dogs, and if at all there is male dog problems, it will be mostly benign. So 50-50 percentage rule, that is 50 percentage of the mammary masses are benign, and 50 percentage of the those are will be malignant. So of the 50 percentage that are malignant, 50 percentage will be having the metastatic chance after the or following the first surgical resection. So surgical anatomy. So there are five pairs of gland that is cranial thoracic and caudal thoracic, cranial abdominal and caudal abdominal, and inguinal. So these are the blood supply and the lymphatic drainage to those pairs of mammary glands. So this is actually the cranial thoracic, caudal thoracic, cranial and caudal abdominal and the inguinal gland. So the predisposing factor or the occurrence, so before first estrus, 0.5 percentage will be the chance and between the first and second estrus, 8 percentage chance and after the second estrus and 2.5 years of age, that will be the 26 percentage chances and these all percentage are based on studies and there are 5 pairs of mammary glands and the caudal 4th and 5th mammary glands, that is the caudal abdominal and the inguinal are mostly affected because there are more mammary tissues there and more estrogen will be affecting them. So moving to the picture gallery of the canine mammary tumors. So this is actually the mammary tumors. So these can vary in size, structure and shape according to the estrogenic effects. So these, this is actually a German Shepherd with mammary tumor. So you can see the mammary tumor and the resected mammary tumor. So moving to the clinical signs, there can be single or multiple nodules located within the mammary gland associated with the nipple or the gland itself. That means there will be multiple nodular structures sometimes on the nipple or even the gland itself. Benign lesions tend to be very small, well circumscribed, firm on palpation. Whereas mammary tumors will be greater than 5 cm in size and which are case of malignant tumors, there will be more than 5 cm and they have the tendency to ulcerate and they can produce metastatic lesions on the lens and other organs. So the tumorigenesis, that is about 50% of the all the mammary tumors in dogs are classified as benign and the most common being fibroadenoma, that is fibrotic adenoma. Gland, that fibrosis will be there in the gland. The malignant tumors reported at this institute, which is actually uh, mainly in the in case of Tanuas and all of the institutes, that is adenocarcinoma, papillary cystic adenocarcinoma and sarcoma is very reported very rarely reported. In cats, the most common reported is adenocarcinoma, that is the malignant case. And these tumors can commonly metastasis primarily to the regional lymph nodes of the thorax and the lungs, liver, kidney, etc. So this is actually the ulcerated and other types of uh, malignant EMT. So palpation of lymph nodes, regional lymph nodes should be also examined in case of any differentials for the mammary tumors that is inguinal, axillary, abdominal lymph nodes, obliquity lymph nodes so that wherever there is inflammation or 
any problems with the lymph node, we can assess whether the CMT presented to us is malignant or benign. So moving to the diagnostic part that is physical examination, radiography, histopathology, tissue biopsy by fine needle aspiration cytology. So physical examination will not be able to have a proper diagnosis about whether the CMT is malignant or benign. Moving to the radiographic pattern, we will be able to rule out about the metastatic occurrence. And moving to the histopathology and tissue biopsy, that will be the best technology to have a better diagnosis. So this is actually the biopsy test. So you can see how we should go for fine needle aspiration cytology, FNSE. So the clinical staging system for uh, mammary gland tumors, stage 1 to stage 5, Whereas you can see, in case of stage 5, tumors are of any size with involvement and metastasis of the regional lymph node. That is, regional lymph node will be completely involved and there will be metastasis. And in case of stage 4, there will not be any metastasis. And you can completely rely upon the stage. The higher the stage, worse the prognosis. That is, whenever stage 1 is going to do 3, 4, 5, the pathology will be more difficult and the words will be the prognosis. So this is actually the grading system for canine mammary tumors, pillar formation, nuclear pleomorphism, mitosis per ton FPF. So these will be helpful for the histopathological assessment of the adenoma or the carcinoma. So this is the prognostic factors for the CMT. Whenever there is uh, more than the diameter of the lesion, we can guide it as uh, this stage 1 to stage 5. So the surgical management, surgery is the most feasible therapeutic option in India and it is cost effective also. So lumpectomy, which is actually removing the tumor mass alone, and simple mastectomy, that means affected mammary glands will be removed. Regional mastectomy, that means when an affected mammary gland and the ipsilateral glands are also removed, whereas unilateral mastectomy is affected glands with all other mammary glands on the side is removed. Whereas bilateral mastectomy means removing all the mammary glands on both sides. So that's, this will reduce the pain of animal and this will be very helpful in prognosis. So surgery is the treatment of choice for removal of mammary tumors and supportive care for any systemic illness should be done. And you can go for the radical mastectomy solution, not necessary. And axillary nodes, lymph nodes should be checked for any metastasis. So this is actually a case of mammary tumor in dog, you can see. So post-operative care, the animal is bandaged with absorbent gauze material and surgical site is dressed with an antiseptic for every 2-5 to five days or 7 days. And we should go for antibiotics and other anti-inflammatory and pain, uh, pain alleviating medications for up to 7 days. And on the 10th post-operative day, the skew sutures will be removed and we should go for chemotherapy and immunomodulators. Anti-estrogenic compounds like tamoxifen is effective because this estrogen is highly acting at the mammary acinar cells and this will lead to the proliferation or uncontrolled proliferation that will lead to neoplastia. Or anti-neoplastic agents can be administered that include doxorubicin IV at 30 mg per meter square and cyclophosphamide based on the dosage therapy. Radiation therapy is effective for carcinoma which is unresponsive to chemotherapy. So immunotherapy that is intravenous BCG therapy on 1st, 2nd and 4th week of every 8 weeks. Complications will be hemorrhage, pain, dehiscence and tumor recurrence. So prognosis will completely depend on the tumor size, histology, mode of growth, clinical stage and all. So this is actually feline mammary tumor. Feline mammary tumors are little bit complicated because they are more infiltrative and they are best treated by extensive surgery by removing all the glands. Thank you.